as an ophthalmologist, you can be a scientist, you can be a surgeon, you can be a, a, a physician, and you get to do wonderful one-on-one -on -one patient care. And to bring it all together, I, 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 the, 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 I can't imagine another field. I had a patient who came in and was referred to me for, uh, with a bad corneal infection, uh, corneal infection. And we went through the normal routine of cultures, strong antibiotics, and because I'm a cornea specialist that also does a procedure called cross-linking, it crossed my mind to perform this procedure uh, to help his infection. Now, cross-linking is not meant for infection necessarily. It's an off-label uh, application. And for this person, when we did the cross-linking, within less than 24 hours, a substantial, substantial improvement in his infection, his pain, and his clinical results uh, were obtained. And he came in the very next day very emotional. I thought he was still in pain, but he was overcome with joy. And he walked into the room, I walked into the room, and he gave me a giant hug uh, and was moved to tears. Uh, and so it's for these novel applications and these off-label applications that really work uh, that, that make me love this field of ophthalmology, and that's why I became an ophthalmologist. I will never forget when I was a resident and I had performed one of my earlier cataract surgeries and the patient removed the patch and we checked the vision the vision was 20-20 and I was thrilled and the patient started crying and I said to myself oh my gosh is there something wrong and he looked at me and his eyes were filled with tears and he said I never thought I would see this well again and at that moment I said I've made the right decision. Just recently I saw a patient that was uh, 46 and uh, so it was presbyopic and uh, had refractive error and I was able to uh, do PRK in both eyes and then uh, in his non-dominant eye able to put in a camera uh, corneal inlay and uh, the combination of those two procedures was able to uh, give him uh, back the ability to do his job as an experimental parachutist. Jumps out of perfectly good airplanes with experimental parachutes and uh, looks at gauges up close at the same time. So the combination of those two procedures is able to give him both distances. Uh, uh, and I think that things like that, you know, make me proud to be uh, an ophthalmologist. The most fulfilling surgery I ever did was on the mother of a colleague, also a medical doctor. She was deaf and dumb. And the only contact with the world was through her eyes. And then we did the an, a cataract surgery under anesthesia. On the morning, the following day, when we removed the eye parts, she just grabbed me and gave me a big hug. Then she knew she was alive. <laughs> it's a patient I inherited who had severe kidney failure, uh, had no insurance, had cataract surgery that we performed successfully, and then he developed a uh, herpes infection around the eye. No one could figure out what was happening except for he was getting much worse. We eventually did a biopsy on it and sent it off to infectious disease. And it turned out he had cryptococcal orbital, preorbital cellulitis, which I think there are about five reported cases ever. We were able to get him the proper treatment, saved his eye, and according to his renal doctor, probably saved his kidneys too by getting it fast enough. So it's just a real thrill to think we had a good part of that and figured out the problem. And that's why I became an ophthalmologist. Recently I helped a veteran who came with an infection in his eye. He had endogenous endophthalmitis and he was on sepsis, but he came to the ophthalmology first because his eye was blurry. And in reality he was septic and you know on death's door. So it was then that I knew that you know all my training has um, definitely helped and we're making a difference. Well, one of the great parts about uh, being an ophthalmologist is fixing vision of course and sometimes patients come in uh, with some severe complications such as a, a lens dropped in the vitreous. Uh, a lot of uh, doctors uh, will shy away from this but actually the skills to solve it are not that complex and uh, when you solve a problem like that where a patient's really concerned about their vision, doesn't know if it's going to come back, you can do the vitrectomy, remove that lens, and then do a scleral fixate IOL. Uh, these patients are just eternally grateful and it makes you feel great about being a surgeon.